Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ali Nafa. I am a pharmacist, health coach, and a YouTuber. Uh, today, I'm not going to speak about stories of Sahaba. Did you see the first slide is stories of Sahaba, but um, actually, I'm going to speak about something else. Uh, always, I have felt that there is something missing when I listen to any story of any Sahabi, of any companion. Um, I felt like we just keep repeating stories. So how many of you listen to Khalid ibn al-Walid's story? Or part of it at any point? So everyone. So if I'm repeating the story, I'm not doing anything new. But actually in this session, I'm going to talk about Khalid ibn al-Walid, but I'm not telling his story. I'm not speaking about his story. But I'm talking about his mentality, how he thought and how we can think like Khalid ibn al-Walid to win the battle of life. Because I, um, I feel that we need to live the story of Sahaba, not just tell the story or listen to the story. We need to live it. We need to take lessons and implement it in our daily life. So today we will talk about the mentality of Khalid ibn al-Walid and how can you uh, how can you understand his mentality and how, can, uh, uh, how you can actually get to a level that's close to him in thinking about things that you uh, accomplish, things that you experience in your daily life. And that's going to make you, I mean, if you implement it, it's going to help you to win the battle of life because life is like a battle. You have uh, competition, you have goals to achieve, you have uh, vision, you have steps to take, you have actions to take, you have a plan, you have, you have to start a plan and then you have to implement the plan. It's like a battle. So Khalid ibn Walid, everybody of us knows who Khalid ibn Walid is. Uh, he's the greatest uh, army leader or military leader in the history of Islam after the Prophet wasallam. He won uh, I, I don't remember exactly, but it's 50 to 100 probably battles. Uh, the first, the first principle. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna talk about three principles, three three main principles about Khalid bin Walid mentality, and this stuff I I came up with. So uh, bear with me. I mean, if uh, probably listening to something that. Uh, you, you will evaluate it. I mean, you will evaluate it, you will listen to it, and you see how it's going to impact your life if you're going to implement it and if you're interested in implementing it. And um, I, I have a presentation, PowerPoint presentation, uh, intentionally because I want you to visualize this. I want you to keep the, these principles in your mind, keep this, these pictures, these mental pictures, actually, this is gonna, it's, because it's going to help you implement these lessons and uh, these principles. So the first lesson, or the first principle is, and you need to probably memorize this, it's easy. Uh, get on your horse at night. Get on your horse at night. And uh, the story behind this is, you know, Khalid ibn Walid, uh, he, uh, he, was the, he, he didn't accept Islam from the beginning, but rather he waited probably about less than a, than a year before uh, Fath Mecca, before conquering of Mecca. So he was late, he was late, but uh, his story of converting to Islam actually is interesting, but I'm, I'm gonna mention part of it, just a specific part, when he uh, thought about Islam and he was about to, came to, to come to a decision, he talked to his cousin, Akram ibn Abi Jahl. It's uh, Akram ibn Abi Jahl, his cousin, and he is one of his friends in Mecca. And uh, he talked to him about, like, I'm thinking about converting to Islam. I'm, I'm thinking about moving to Al Medina to the Prophet. Um, so Akram was actually shocked and talked to the leaders of Quraysh and brought, him, brought them to home to talk to Khalid ibn Walid. And some of them threatened Khalid ibn Walid. To, to kill Khalid ibn Walid. So Akrima said, I'm, I'm not bringing you to kill him. I'm bringing you actually to, so we can talk about that. And he took them away from Khalid. 
but what, what happened is Khalid in the same night, once he took a decision, he got on his horse at night, he didn't wait until the morning and moved to Al Medina and uh, started a new era of his life, uh, a new era full of success, full of achievement. And the lesson we're going to take, we take from this is once you make a decision, you need to move quickly. Do not wait. Do not wait until the morning. Do not wait until the next hour. Uh, just take, make a decision and then start implementing right away. Uh, and I like this famous saying, it says, uh, high achievers or high performers spot rich opportunities swiftly. Uh, make big decisions quickly and move into action immediately. So this is the first principle. Actually, be, be, w was that, without this principle, Khalid ibn Walid wouldn't have been Khalid ibn Walid that we know. Wouldn't have been the successful army leader, the great companion that we know. But he always he used to take action immediately. Take action, take action, move on to the next thing. And that's actually uh, what happened in his battles and in his life in general. He was very quick in making decisions and taking actions. So we need to take actions and do not wait. And that's if you take this principle and apply it to the, your daily life, it's going to change your life. Because most people uh, have, have problems with making decisions. Like many of us have ideas, good ideas. Um, many of us have good suggestions. Many of us probably have good goals, but they don't move towards it. They don't make decisions to move to the next step, to implement it, to uh, transform it from, uh, from uh, having it as an idea to a reality. So think about the speech that you thought about giving, the video that you thought about recording it, the suggestion that you thought about sending it and you, you have never done, the call that you thought about making it. Uh, anything that you thought about starting it and you didn't. Think about that and think about it if you have done it, if you have made a decision once, once you reached, once you uh, thought about the idea and then you reach to a conclusion that you're gonna need, it, uh, you're gonna make this a reality. Think about it if you have done all these ideas, if you implement all of them, or not all, probably most of them or even some of them. Think about your life how different would it have been? But it's not too late. You can start from now, changing your life and thinking like Khalid ibn Walid. And I want you to look at this picture and have it as a mental picture. Whenever you come to, you have an idea and you are hesitant about applying it, you're hesitant about taking the next step, think about Khalid ibn Walid when he decided to convert to Islam and he made, he made the decision and he took action immediately in the same night. He moved in the same night. And uh, actually, the fact that he moved in the same night, it means that he wasn't, he wasn't ready for moving. So imagine about moving from uh, a city to another, a place to another. And it's not just uh, regular moving. It's moving probably forever. And moving from, uh, from Mecca to Al Medina, from one camp to another and leaving all, all his family, his friends, it's a new life. And he, yet, he made this decision very quickly. So this is one of the things that uh, actually probably have changed my life and may change your life too. Once, if you have something to do and you reach a decision, uh, plan to do it uh, as soon as you can, specifically if it doesn't take that much time. So uh, many things doesn't take, like if you think about making call or sending an email, I mean, everything starts with a simple thing. Even if you're, we're going to start a new business or a new idea, a new nonprofit organization, new plan, new anything, anything you want to do, it's, it starts with a very simple thing. And most likely it doesn't take less than two minutes. So think about any action you want to take. If it takes less than two minutes, do not postpone it. If it takes more than two minutes, if you have time, do it. If you don't have time, you need to have a plan for it. Uh, put it on your reminder and uh, have it uh, on your calendar. Make specific plan to do it, and you'll find your life uh, changing, inshallah. And the second principle. So remember, what's the first principle is? Get on your horse at night, which means take action immediately. Uh, the second principle is... Uh, take the banner before you are ready. 
take the banner before you're ready. You know, in, in the uh, Battle of Mu'tah, uh, the Prophet وسلم, assigned three uh, leaders, Jafar ibn Abi Talib, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, Zaid ibn Haritha, and they, all of them killed. And uh, Khalid Walid was just like few weeks after his uh, conversion to Islam. So one of the companions took the banner and said, Khalid, uh, take this banner, the, the flag, the banner of the, uh, of the, uh, of the army. So Khalid said, I'm, you, you, I mean, you are better than me. You know more than I know. I'm, I'm still new Muslim. He said, but you know about war more than me. So Khalid Walid took it immediately. And probably he wasn't ready. And because, because as we will know later, that he made mistakes, actually. Because he, he didn't know ab uh, much about the fiqh of war. So he made mistakes, not necessarily in Mu'tah, but in other battles. And so if you apply this principle and think about it and apply in your daily life, is you don't have to be ready. You don't have to be ready to take action, to start a new thing, to start a new idea. Uh, this is what actually hold people back. Because they think, no, I'm not ready. I have to do this thing, that thing. Uh, and they actually don't do anything. They end up not doing it. They end up just staying uh, where they are. But if they take the opportunity and start, even if they are, before they're ready, they're going to take the chance, they're going to learn. And even if they will fail, it's OK. It's OK to make mistakes. Uh, so this is the second principle, and it's very powerful. Take the banner before you're ready. And this is actually a research that uh, has been done in a school of art where uh, uh, a professor had a project for students to make uh, ceramic containers, I think. And uh, uh, this is an actual research. And he assigned uh, his students like two groups. The first group, he told them, I want to have you uh, make 50 pounds of ceramic containers, regardless. Like, it doesn't matter how many of them. It doesn't matter how the quality of the containers. Just I want you to make 50 pounds. If you get 50 pounds done, I'm going to give you A for this course. And for the second group, he told them, you know, I want you to make only one container. Only one. But I want you to make it very good. Because you're going you're gonna to take your, uh, you're going to be graded based on the quality and how it looks, and if, you, if it's very good, I'm going to give you A as, as, it, as it goes, like A, B, C. Um, and imagine what was the result. The best uh, containers that had been done was for the group that, did, that had the 50 pounds assignment, not the group that had the, the one container. You know why? Because the one that, uh, the, the group that has only for, for every student, they have one, they kept like, planning about it and then thinking about it and then trying to make it perfect. But the other group, they just kept going on and then they started. And it, it probably the first one wasn't that good, and then, but the next one was better and, and then better, better. So the last one for everyone, for them, was better than the other group. So this is actually a, a lesson that just, just start doing things. And when we start doing it, you'll, you'll improve it as you go. And that's happened with me when I started uh, my YouTube channel, like I thought about at the beginning, it took me like long time, probably a few months to start. I want to have like a perfect video, perfect setting, but I found out that it's not gonna work. And then I just started, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna film, I'm gonna talk, I don't have to prepare, I don't have to have a script, I'm just gonna make a video and get my message to the world. Uh, it's about health. And, and now in less than a year, I have about 11,000 subscribers in my Arabic channel and I started another ch a new channel in English. So whatever idea you have, just, just get started. Take the banner before you are ready. Like Khalid ibn Walid, you need to think like Khalid ibn Walid. We need to change the characters of companions from the books of history and just regular talks to our uh, daily life. To, we we want to have them living examples for us. We want to think like them, act like them. It doesn't have to be like them exactly because you're, you're not in a war, but you can take these principles and not, not only Khalid ibn Walid, whenever you read the story for any uh, Sahabi or for, for the Prophet وسلم, for any companion, try to think what are the lessons that I can take from uh, this story and how can I implement it to my life. So start before you're ready. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and you know the... 
It says always ready, fire, aim, but there is another way. Ready, aim, fire. Ready, aim, fire. You can, you can remember this. Ready, aim, fire. Because you can, you can even... Uh, ready, fire, aim, sorry. You can do ready, fire, aim, even if you're not like perfect at aiming and specifying goals at planning. You just start and you're going to get there. And the third principle in uh, Khalid bin Walid and how to, we think about Khalid bin Walid is throw your weak camels in the trench. Throw your weak camels in the trench. And this is, there is a story behind this. Uh, Khalid bin Walid uh, uh, was assigned by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq uh, to go to conquer uh, Persia, where it is uh, Iraq now. And uh, uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq assigned two companions, uh, Khalid ibn walid and Ayyad ibn Ghanam, as, if, as far as I remember. And he told everyone to go from specific directions and to meet at a certain point, like whoever conquers the more, more cities and win more battles and reach this point first, we're, we're going to be the general ar army leaders. He wanted to motivate them. So Khalid Malid, he was very fast. He won very uh, many battles, like very quickly. Um, and before he, uh, be before he reaches Al-Madain, which was the capital for uh, Persia at that time, uh, he received a letter from Abu Bakr Siddiq saying that you need to go to Ayyad. He's in Dawmit al-Jandal and he needs help. Um, so uh, Khalid Mawalid just uh, obeyed the uh, uh, order, the directions right away. And in his way, there was a city. I don't remember if it was Al Anbar, but there was a city there. And he had to conquer this city in his way. Uh, and the problem with this, this city, they had like a big castle and they had a trench around it. So it was very difficult and they, they, they have everything they need. It would probably stay forever for a long time. What, so what he did, he did something like unusual. He uh, went around the, uh, around the castle, around this uh, city, and then th the trenches around it. So he found the nearest point in the trench, and he decided to, he uh, asked his uh, soldiers to, to uh, slaughter the weak uh, camels and throw them in the trench and at this point. Then they crossed the trench and conquered the, the city, conquered the castle, and won the battle uh, by this idea. So what I'm taking from here is innovation, creativity. So you need to think out of the box. If you want to think like Khalid ibn Walid, you always want to come up with new ideas, new things to do. People like most people are, most people are like conditions to think like regularly. They, they, they don't get, get out of the norm. Uh, they do things as it they used to do it, or they uh, do things like they they have seen people other people doing it. But if you do things differently, if you come up, if you become creative, you come up with new ideas. Uh, I guarantee you that you will succeed, and you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get things done. You're gonna get your goals achieved. So always think creatively, like Khalid ibn Walid. And uh, some of the techniques to think creatively, it's to, uh, one, one of them is to read, because the more you read, the more you learn from people who have wisdom, people who have, like they have experience and they failed and then they succeeded, so you learn from them, so you save your life years of experience and you have also big ideas from wise people. And reading changed my life, actually. So um, I used to not read, but when I started reading, I found my life changing because I, I had no ideas. I became like coming up with creative ideas and implementing it, and it, it was life changing. Uh, try something new. So people are always scared from starting new things. Um, people are usually have fear from trying new things. They, they, they want to do things regularly the way they, they, they used to have it. But if you try new, uh, something new, uh, that's going to help you to come up with uh, creative things. And always accept ambiguity. Because if you do something new, if you come up with creative ideas, it's not gonna, you're, gonna not, you're not going to feel comfortable. There's going to be like confusion. You're going to be unsure. You feel like lost. But that, that's OK. You need to accept the ambiguity feeling, you need to uh, focus on and, uh, uh, and the things that are possible 
and to uh, impress the discomfort. You're gonna feel discomfort, discomfort when you do it. Uh, you're gonna feel, have like mixed feeling, but it's okay, just start doing it and you will uh, be able to uh, do more and come up with ideas. And even if one idea doesn't work, the other will work. Uh, this is an innovation uh, adoption life cycle. And 2.5, it says this is based on research. It's 2.5 of people are innovators. So those people who come up with ideas, who like to come up with new ideas, to implement new things, just only 2.5 people. Where do you think Khaled ibn Walid is here? He's for sure from the 2.5, if he's not at the top 0.001%. Uh, so, and those people actually, those people are always the leaders in their communities, in their organizations, in their companies, in their business. People will come up with new ideas. And then you will go to 13.5 of people are early adopter. What they probably don't come up with ideas, but they, when they find something new, they're gonna do it, they wanna do it. And then early majority, 34% of people, they wanna find, uh, they wanna make sure that other people like uh, have done or have implemented the idea before they can uh, impress the ideas and, and uh, implement it. And then you have late majority, which is one third of people. They wanna find like large, large number of people have done, have done these things or this idea before them in order for them to uh, adopt it. And then you will have laggard, 16% of people are people who refuse change, people who don't like change, people who want to stay where they are. And we shouldn't be from those people, we should be always trying to go to that 2.5%. One of the uh, principles we learned from Khalid Malid is uh, uh, a life making mistakes is better than life doing nothing. Uh, because if he waited until he, uh, until he thinks that he's ready or he learned about other things or he learned about fiqh of war, for example, I mean, he, 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 need, he needed to learn, but he started very quickly. And he made mistakes on the way with the Prophet Sallallahu when he assigned him to one battle. And uh, with, uh, uh, with Abu Bakr Siddiq, with Abu Bakr Siddiq, yeah, he made, it was a huge mistake actually, but it didn't hold him back and he continued. And probably some of you are familiar with these stories. Um, so it's okay to make mistakes. And then the last principle that I'm gonna talk about is uh, living Quran. So you know Khalid Malid wasn't like, he, he didn't memorize Quran, and even reading the Quran, he used to make mistakes while reading it. But he was living the Quran. He was implementing the Quran in his daily life. And all his life was actions, and taking actions, jihad, doing good things, that the uh, Quran, actually this is, these are the instructions of the Quran. So the main idea here is not to, guys, discourage you from memorizing or from reciting Quran. It is important, but the more important is to implement the Quran in your daily, daily life, is to live the Quran. It's not only enough to recite Quran or even to memorize Quran. And this is actually one of the problems we have in Muslim communities. We, uh, we focus on reciting and uh, memorizing sometimes, but we don't focus on tadabbur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the Quran down uh, for tadabbur. Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun why? لِيَدَّبَّرُوا It's not, it's not, it wasn't like he didn't say لِيَتْلُوا or لِيَحْفَظُوا He said لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ He uh, sent the Quran down, he كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكًا So you can do tadabbur, and tadabbur is not only reciting, and it's not only reading tafsir or understanding or trying to understand, it's also about implementing. So reading or reciting, uh, you can also memorize, which, 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 which will help, but you don't have to. In it, but in addition to that, you need to understand, and it's not only enough, you need to implement. You need to change what you learn from the Quran to implement it in your daily life. And this is actually tadabbur. Other, otherwise, you're not doing, if you're just reading letters and then counting letters and, and words, which most Muslims do, unfortunately, just they, they read just to get rewards, which is okay, which is just good to get rewards, but it's not the only reason we read Quran. We read Quran for tadabbur. We read Quran to understand, we, we read Quran, we recite Quran to learn, we recite Quran to find solutions for our problems, we recite Quran to implement it in, in our daily life, to live the Quran. So if you'd like to think like Khalid ibn al-Walid, uh, you need to live the Quran. 
Um, I would like to give you, a, a, it's not like, I don't like to call it a homework, but something to try yourself if you have, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I wanna get to the last, the last slide here before I say that. So these are the three main principles. So the first one, who helps me here? What's the first principle? Yeah, get, get on your horse at night, which is get started, like take action immediately. The second one? Yeah, take the banner before you're ready, even if you, if, even if you are, you are not ready yet. And the, uh, the third one? Creativity, yeah. Throw your camels in the trench. And actually, if you, if you remember these words, and if you remember these pictures, these mental pictures, and you put them, you know, I, I, I did that, like, I, uh, after I th thought about Khalid ibn Walid mentality and how I am in, in, in my daily life, when I, whenever I come to something, like I think about Khalid ibn Walid, I can see him riding his horse at night, leaving Mecca, and then I tell myself I need to take action immediately. If I wanna, if I wanna be like him, if I wanna have his mentality, I wanna take action immediately. So if you remember these pictures, if you have it in your mind, that's gonna help you a lot in implementing and having thinking like Khalid ibn Walid to win the battle of life. And the, uh, th there is a quick task for you. It's for you to test yourself if you uh, have learned and if you will implement uh, some of the lessons you have learned here. And I'm gonna give you a task that's not gonna take more than two minutes. Two minutes, and you remember the two minutes rule. If it takes less than two minutes, then do it right away. It's very quick. Uh, it's to provide the feedback to the ISM about this session. So it doesn't have to be specific. You can say like, I liked it, I didn't like it, it was life changing or it, 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 uh, it was like nonsense or whatever, whatever. I learned a lot from it or I didn't learn a lot from it. I didn't learn anything from it. Whatever you have a feedback, go to the ISM website and then contact us. And then you, it's, 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 uh, you're gonna find like a message there. It says, put your, uh, write down your name, email, and write down a message and make sure to uh, mention like think like Khalid ibn Walid, Ali Nafi' A L I N A F E A. So I know this feedback is uh, about this session. So we can improve in the future from your feedback. We can improve, and it's for yourself to test yourself. If you have learned something from here about taking action, then you will do it. Who is willing to do it? Raise your hand if you are willing to do that. The one minute task. Just one minute task, so go online and to provide the feedback. Okay, so if you uh, raise your hand, even if you didn't raise your hand, try to uh, test yourself if you're gonna uh, provide this feedback and take action, and take action immediately. Uh, thank you so much, I hope you have learned something from the from this session. Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.